Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be covering the final part of kitchen tools and equipment. Today is going to be pots and pans and molds. So let's get started. All right, we made it to the home stretch, you guys. I thank you from the bottom of my heart if you've made it this far and you've watched the other two videos. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff you probably already know, but hopefully you found one item from each of the videos that you just can't wait to have in your kitchen. So pots and pans, obviously one of the most important things in the kitchen, which is why I saved it for last. Pots and pans come in a variety of different material types. One of those materials is copper. Copper pots and pans require proper care. They are an excellent conductor of heat. Copper heats and cools quickly and evenly. However, it can be extremely expensive and requires special care and is heavy. Copper pots and pans are great for cooking sugar and fruit mixtures and whipping egg whites. Copper can produce negative reactions with acidic food. When copper and copper alloy surfaces contact acidic food, copper may be leached into the food. It's important to avoid using acidic foods such as tomatoes and citrus fruits with copper. Some copper pots and pans come with a tin of lining of protection. However, unfortunately, that lining is easily scratched and eliminates the effectiveness it offers to whipping egg whites. When copper and copper alloy surfaces come in contact with acidic foods, copper may be leached into the food. Cast iron also requires popular care. Cast iron distributes and holds heat evenly and at high temperatures. Cast iron is often used for large skillets and griddles. Unfortunately, cast iron can be extremely extremely heavy and brittle and must be kept properly conditioned or seasoned to prevent rust and pitting. Stainless steel pots and pans are poor conductors of heat and retention. They're hard and durable and good for holding foods at low temperatures where scorching is not a problem. They are available bound with copper or aluminum to increase conductivity or strength. Stainless steel is ideal for storage containers as it does not negatively react with food. Different types of steel include blue steel, which is an alloy steel made of white steel, a carbon steel with low content of impurities, mixed with tungsten and chromium. Black steel, made of steel that has not been galvanized. Black steel has dark colored iron oxide coating on its surface. Pressed steel is made by shaping steel sheets between dies in a mechanical or hydraulic press. Rolled steel is a type of steel that's formed using a hot rolling process at a very specific temperature. All of these are prone to discoloration. Aluminum is most common in professional kitchens, particularly for utensils, but aluminum pots and pans conduct heat well. Aluminum is soft and should be handled with care. Aluminum reacts negatively with acidic foods and should not be used to store food. Aluminum pots and pans can discolor light colored soups and sauces. Avoid using aluminum utensils such as whisks and spoons unless it is adenized aluminum. Another type of pot and pan is a non-stick pot and pan, generally coated with a plastic called PTFE. Non-stick pans offer a slippery non-reactive finish to prevent foods from sticking. They require a good amount of care. The coating can scratch, chip, and blister which releases chemicals. It is very important to use plastic or silicone utensils only when using nonstick cookware. Making sure not to heat oil to the point of smoking is also helpful. I'm sure it, at this point, if you know me at all, you know that I am not a fan of nonstick pans and over the years I've started facing them out because I've had way too many that flake and you can visibly see where the coating is missing and all that means is that I was ingesting poison, I was ingesting plastic, so I'm not a huge fan of nonstick surfaces, despite the fact that there are a lot of different ones out there these days that seem like they may be better, like the green pan or the orange pan. It's all up to you. I'm not here to tell you not to poison yourself. Next is a glass pot or pan. Glass is a poor conductor of heat, but holds heat well. There is no food interaction with glass. Tempered glass is a microwave safe glass. Glass is rarely used in professional settings due to the danger of broken glass. There are ceramic pots and pans, which is known as earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain. Ceramic is primarily used in baking dishes, casseroles, and baking stones. Ceramic is a good conductor and retainer of temperatures. It is non-reactive and expensive 
and usually suitable for the microwave. Ceramics, however, are easily chipped and cracked and should not be used over direct flame. Quick temperature changes can cause shattering or cracking. Enamelware should not be used for food or cooking, and in many areas, their use in professional kitchens is prohibited by law. Enamelware chips and cracks easily, providing a good home for bacteria. Chemicals used to bond the cookware can often cause food poisoning. Aluminum, steel, and I guess wire when it comes to whips is measured by gauge, which is the thickness of the metal. The lower the number, the thicker the material. All right. Are you still with me? Hope you're still with me. So we're gonna move on to the different types of pots and pans. And this is more of, I guess, the exciting part, especially if you're a foodie or a kitchen nerd. The first type of pot or pan is the stock pot. A stock pot or marmite is a large deep pot used for simmering stocks and soup. Stock pots are also great for boiling pasta as they allow room without danger of sticking. Preferred materials of a stock pot include adenized aluminum and stainless steel. A saucepan is a pan with straight edges. It is very versatile. It also can be used for making and reducing sauces. A sauce pot is similar to a stock pot, but it's not as large. A sauce pot has straight sides and two loop handles for lifting. So a sauce pan versus a sauce pot. A sauce pot has tall sides and two looped handles, while a sauce pan is shallow with one long handle. You would slow cook a flavorful tomato soup in a sauce pot. You would whisk a creamy bechamel sauce in a saucepan or saucier. Boiling lasagna noodles would take place in a stock pot. There's a Dutch oven, also known as a casserole. It is high as it is wide. It usually has a lid and loop handles. It is burner and oven friendly. Then they have a rondeau or brazier or brazier, similar to a stock pot or Dutch oven, only more shallow. It's used for browning and simmering. There are cast iron versions called Griswolds. A brazier is used to sear meat by browning it on a stove top. A sautise is a wide base slope side pan, similar to a Dutch oven or saute pan. A sautise has a versatile shape and size for searing, braising, roasting, and baking that easily goes from stove to oven to table. A sauteur is a heavier pan, typically with straight sides. This is because it is commonly used for sauces and reductions, where the fat, heavier bottom helps the cooking process. It makes a good pot to cook a protein in, then make an accompany pan sauce in. It's often referred to as a saute pan. Alma pan or crepe pan is a shallow skillet with short sloping sides for ease of swirling, shaping, and quickly cooking omelets and crepes. A shallow saute pan can work in a pinch as an alternative to an omelet pan or a crepe pan. A bain-marie or a double boiler is a water bath. It gently cooks dishes in warm water that surrounds the food dish. A bain-marie or double boiler is used with items such as custards, sauces, and mousses. It helps in the prevention of curling or breaking the sauce. A griddle has a flat, rimless design for use with minimal amounts of fat or oil. A griddle is usually a good heat conductor and usually has handles. A fish poacher is a long, narrow pot with straight sides and a perforated rack for holding fish. A steamer is a large pot with perforated inserts or stacking layers in a lid. It's used to gently cook food with steam over the top of boiling or simmering water. A couscousier is a double chamber food steamer specifically used for couscous. A crock pot is a slow cooker. It cook with low, steady, moist heat. A crock pot is designed to cook food over eight to 12 hours. It comes in one to six quart sizes. One of its disadvantages is that it doesn't uniformly cook all ingredients. Then there are some specialty pots and pans which include a wok. A wok is a large bowl shaped pan that distributes heat evenly while allowing rapid tossing and stirring when and stir frying. Paella pan is a large, shallow, skill like pan, usually made of cast iron, enameled metal, or brushed aluminum. Most have handles on either side. They are used specifically for making the Spanish dish paella. Grill pans are used to simulate a grill. It's best used on a gas stovetop. Let's get into the oven. For oven cooking, we have a roasting pan, which is rectangular with medium high sides used for roasting and baking. It comes in various sizes. There's a sheet pan, which is a low sided rectangular pan that allows heat to circulate in the oven and around the food. It may be a full size sheet pan or half size sheet pan. A hotel pan is a rectangular pan used for prepping and holding cooked foods in a steam table, hot box, or steamers. It's used to marinate meats or for food storage and refrigerators. They come in deep, shallow, half size, full size, and 
then other sizes in addition to that. They can also be used for holding cold ingredients in the garde manger department. Pate mold is a deep rectangular metal mold with hinge sides to facilitate removal of the pate. It comes in a variety of shapes and sizes for presentation, such as oval and tubular. Terrine molds are used for pates and terrines. Pate and terrine, which translates into paste in a dish, may be oval or rectangular and has a lid. Traditionally, terrine molds have been made in earthenware, but they also may be made of enameled cast iron. A gratine dish is a shallow oval baking dish made of ceramic, enameled cast iron, or enameled steel. A souffle dish is a straight edged round dish that comes in various sizes used for making soufflés. A tambal mold is a small metal or ceramic mold used for individual portions of molded cooked vegetables that may have a custard base. There are a number of specialty molds, include the Dariole, the Severine, the Ring, and other shapes used specifically for achieving various shapes. The springform pan is similar to a cake pan, however, a springform pan has springs that can be released in order to remove the cake from the pan easier. It's used for cheesecakes and other delicate cakes. Loose bottom tart pans are shallow round pans with removable bottom. The sides may be scalloped or straight or generally shorter than that of a pie pan. Smaller versions are called tartlet pans. Pie pan is a rounded pan with flared sides. A pie pan is deeper than a tart pan. Loaf pans are deep pans that are usually rectangular. The sides may be straight or flared. They're usually made for baking bread. Pullman loaf pans are square pans with lid to make Pullman loaves of bread. Muffin tins are pans with small round or square sections for making muffins. These days, muffin pans can be replicated without the actual pan by using silicone muffin tins. I highly recommend these. It's much easier than trying to clean out the corners of a muffin pan and they're much easier to store than muffin tins. Then we have a tube pan, which is a deep round pan with a tube in the center to create a specific effect. Some are similar to spring foam pans, having removable sides or loose bottoms like tart pans. They're usually used for making chiffons and angel food cakes. A kugel hop form, and I hope I pronounced that right, is a special fluted design tube used for preparing sweet raised cakes flavored with dried fruits and nuts. I'm guessing that's the kind of pan that they make for making everybody's favorite fruit cake. All right, guys. That's it for kitchen equipment. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, go take a look at those too so that you're up to speed because when it comes to getting down to the nitty gritty cooking part, I'm not going to be giving you the information on what the pots and pans I'm using are generally for or anything like that. These first classes are to set a base of understanding so that when we get to the cooking part, there's less to explain. Come back for the next video where we're going to be doing safety and sanitation in the kitchen, which is probably one of the most important parts of kitchen work, whether or not you're at home or in the professional kitchen. Thank you for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Do some of the things you know I like, a thumbs up, a comment, a subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, have a wonderful day.